Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending Lab Manager's Automation Digital Summit. My name is Mary Beth Didana, and I'll be moderating this discussion. Laboratory automation systems are used for operating equipment and other applications with minimal human intervention to solve problems in the lab, free up time for valuable staff members, improve safety, and encourage standardization. Lab managers need to make decisions on when and where to employ automated systems in the lab versus when to rely on humans for certain tasks, weighing the pros and cons of each option. What are the cost benefits? How will automation affect your staffing needs? Lab Manager will address these issues and more as part of our Automation Digital Summit. Welcome to this session entitled, Moving Beyond the Basics in Total Lab Automation. Automation is not just about bo bolting track hardware, sample management, robotics, and analyzers together. What happens when your lab requires the highest flexibility and scalability to scale from small to mega-sized workloads? What if your clinicians need to connect multidisciplinary clinical systems to the track, or what if you need to connect automated systems on multiple floors? Lab Manager likes our webinars to be very interactive, so we encourage you to send us your questions at any point during today's webinar. Our speaker will address these questions during the question and answer session following her presentation. To ask a question, simply type your query into the question box, which is located on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll try to address as many questions as possible during our time together. If we run out of time, I will forward any unanswered questions to today's speaker and she can respond to you directly if possible. Additional resources for today's presentation are located on the right-hand side of your screen. I would like to remind you that this webinar recording will be available for on-demand download shortly following this live presentation, so please watch your email inbox for more information from Lab Manager. I'd also like to extend a special thank you to our sponsors whose support allows Lab Manager to keep these webinars free of charge for our readers. So with that, I'd like to introduce our presenter for this webinar. Marisol Roberts' professional background had its start in open heart and the heart abdominal transplant nursing. Because of transplant medicine, her passion for quality laboratory practices has always been top of mind to deliver the highest standards of care to patients. This passion led Marisol to various roles in the in vitro diagnostics industry. And in 2018, she joined NPECO as president and head of business development for the Americas division, where her responsibilities are focused on the promotion of the Impeco brand and the vision of the total testing process. Marisol, thanks for joining us today. Please begin your presentation. Thanks so much, Mary Beth. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really excited to uh, present this topic today. Automation is definitely a cutting edge topic in healthcare today. Uh, we are all very familiar with uh, the whys for automation in the laboratory and principally there for error reduction and staff, staff augmentation. But we also know there are some increasing trends demanding, uh, demanding increasing in, in productivity, um, optimum utilization of laboratory staffing needs, but also to deliver and overachieve production, quality, cost, and patient satisfaction metrics. We know that automation is speeding along the thought process from nice to have for large reference laboratories to must have for any clinical laboratory. We know that the reimbursements for laboratory testing has only increased the importance of automation and with continued reductions in reimbursement that push laboratory to optimize laboratory throughput and integrate every component of laboratory workflow and integration of all disciplines. Like space travel, and I love these pictures because I was born in the era around when we first went to the moon in the United States, there were the basics of space travel from flying to now rocket ships. We know that automation is a product of how healthcare trends are raising the importance and awareness that the lab will play a, a bigger and greater contribution to elevate healthcare from inside and outside the lab to new emerging frontiers and providing the critical clinical data piece, the robust data the lab produces to different clinicians as they join together towards the precision and population health movement today. But before we really dive into things, I'd really like to give you a brief overview of Impeco. And Impeco was founded by Gian Andrea Pedrazzini. Um, you know, a big part of his mindset in the beginning was building upon the basics of good laboratory practices. And how does he take that 
beyond the basics to the lab of the future, meaning with the thought and dream of automation, automation is not designed to replace people, but in his vision, automation is designed to ensure that business objectives and human objectives are aligned as possible so that automated experiences can be scaled. And as they scale, they scale the human values with them with a sense of what is meaningful to humans. So what does that really mean? It means that can we really leverage the expertise and skill sets of laboratorians to contribute to the uh, delivery of information so that clinicians can build the insights, create treatment decisions, and deliver those plans to patients because ultimately that's the most important thing. What can we do to impact patient care? Out of this vision came our mission, and that is, how do we have innovation that helps labs design models to promote predictive, proactive, and pre preventative healthcare models? How do we have models that remove the silos of clinical decision thinking? And through the vehicles of advanced automation solutions and robotics, how do we make sure top of mind is patient-centric so that their positive patient identification has highest integrity and traceability within full process control. Ultimately, we want to create a lab where with through, through standard work and high quality processes, we have greater efficiency and better outcomes while leveraging the true talents of our laboratory technologists. And that is managing a quality test result and timely distribution of those results to clinicians. So through this vision came the total testing process. And what does that mean? It's how do these solutions really secure both physical and digital chain of patient samples and data from physician order to results release all the way back to results um, or test, uh, test management for those tests that require repeats or, or manual dilutions? How do we keep that loop closed so that we have full traceability and process control ensuring the right outcomes? So what I'd like to do is just to show you a brief video that really encapsulates our purpose and vision at Impeco. Mary Beth, you can, you can uh, start the video now. All right, thanks, Marisol, back to you. Okay, so when we look at innovation in the lab, uh, you know, typically as laboratorians, and even though I'm a nurse, I consider myself a laboratorian because I've had the distinct privilege of working with some great expert minds on how together we build that healthcare ecosystem to deliver the best to patients. But fundamentally, uh, the, the lab is about the tube and the patient is about the tube. That's what we share between nursing and the laboratory. And when you look at all of these colors of tubes, they truly represent what could be going on in one patient. The historic way pre-automation was many of these tubes were dispersed to different parts 
of the laboratory. And we call that aliquoting the patient within the physical space of, let's say, a facility. We also know aliquoting can be simply pouring a sample or um, sharing that tube among different analyzers. But the goal of Impeco was to always say, how do we build the participation and the partnerships to really drive within a very efficient and effective clinical process and uh, remove the waste in transporting specimens to other areas of the laboratory to get the answer for one patient. So in the vision, we look very seriously at co-locating clinical lab workflows. And from a standpoint of early automation, where automation was focused on chemistry and hematology, our vision at Impeco is to say, how can we bring all this work and make efficient for the medical technologists the testing process so they can efficiently deliver those results to physicians in a timely manner? In addition to con the connectivity strategy of, that, of today of about 10 disciplines, we also said, how can we also remove some of the manual tasks and create standard work to drive quality at step one with positive patient ID, with ensuring that the medical technologist can really focus on the verification and validation of a result and not take their time away from loading an analyzer, moving a tube to a different analyzer, capping, uncapping, spinning those types of manual tasks. We let the automation line support the medical technologist. The impact we see when we look at that is we really are helping to scale and empower labs to grow with their, grow with their customer and patient base. We can help them create predictable um, turnaround times to improve the service and delivery standards for doctors and patients. We can ensure a level of safety because once the tube is placed on the track, there is no touching for biohazard uh, concerns. And of course, we definitely want a, a capability as clinicians start to add additional disease states to that patient profile and management that the scalable, scalability of a system allows for that. So when you're thinking about automation, a lot of people will say to us, that's really a big mountain to climb. And uh, one of the things that we do is in, at Impeco is we understand that you need the most robust data set in order to make that decision. And you need a set of eyes that also helps you understand what are our current needs, those that we see and perhaps those we don't see in order to arrive at a decision that could stand the test of time and grow with our process. So we start with an analytical phase. We try to understand your workflow. And when we understand your workflow, it's not just your current key performance indicators that we're looking at, but what key performance indicators do you hope to achieve in the future? Within that model, we always look at your process as a whole, as a people, process, and plant situation where it is never separated from each other because all intersect very symbionically to have an efficient and effective workflow process. We then employ our design specialist who can say, given the objectives of where this lab would like to, to achieve, what, what are the solutions that can help bridge their current state to future state? We test those assumptions and hypotheses very carefully with you to make sure that we are communicating and demonstrating what the potential impact will be as you move towards an automated decision. Because our goal is to understand not just that you've implemented automation, but at what point would you need to grow from this automation? What are the conditions that can improve its design to maximize your workflow? During implementation, we have project managers down here below, implementation and confirmation. We have project management teams that work very closely with our consultants who started in the analytical phase and the service engineers to ensure that as we go through this process, the timelines are well understood and we can help 
you shift and transition your current state to your future state. So what are the, what are the key points to remember as you jumpstart your laboratory automation project? Number one, and you've seen, you see that I've highlighted this specific box. Um, building a multidisciplinary team is absolutely key. Part of the needs analysis that we do with our consultants is we try to understand which processes that you want to start with to improve. So it could be an outpatient focus, it could be an inpatient focus, it could be both. But this is where we coach our customers on understanding what the, what the optimum complement could be. This is a part where we also can say ancillary services may be interested in joining this project because, because um, workflow outputs that come out of the laboratory could ultimately impact them. It's always important to identify within your site an internal project manager. Typically, these are um, PMP certified type project managers, but experience is really key here. Experience with um, design and implementation of a projects, complex projects, projects that engage different organizational teams within your business are key. Another key that is important here is if your internal project manager is also um, has experience in change management because it's great to have a good project, but there's also the element of human adoption that will be key. And I'm going to speak to that in a later slide. It's important to map out your current processes. And this is one of the areas that we uh, spend a lot of time with, with our customers. And we speak to um, really arriving at our understanding of what is. Uh, the important thing in this step is not to put judgment into your process, but just to document uh, what, what can, what should, what do we want to automate, where are our pain points, and ultimately uh, how this would fit in our must-have list. OK, and the reason why we talk about must have lists, because there are elements that can and can't be automated. So, you know, one of the things that are, are that cannot be automated, for example, is poor label placement. So there is typically a discussion on developing a business process to manage label placement. The next thing to do is to identify your potential space for your lab automation. And it's at this point we'll also ask, are there going to be a facilities representative or architect? Because jointly, as we design this lab, we can also jointly design the physical requirements. And then last but not least is really finding some strong partners within the, the vendors that you are working with, in particular, if there's specific disciplines you would like to engage into the automation, it's important to start those intro meetings um, and presentations. So the critical elements for implementation. This is actually one of my favorite slides because when you're going from a manual process to an automated process. It's always very important that these five elements are key in order to facilitate change. If the vision is missing, meaning is what is the reason why we're going to automation? Sometimes when the vision is missing, those that may be satisfied with the existing process may not have the desire to change. So the vision to why it's clear, and not only the vision to why it's clear, but the vision as it's translated to each individual group that may be, enact, may be interacting with the new automated system. It's always good to also assess the skills. One of the labs that we have worked with um, actually did an assessment with their people to see who had um, sort of a, a tendency to want to uh, dive into new technology. Uh, they're really the trailblazers. They're the first with the new iPhone uh, against those that might not be that interested in, in really forging ahead with something new and um, new and unchartered, if you will. So there have been some of our labs who said, well, we need these, these tasks in our lab to remain unautomated, or potentially we can develop a customer-facing customer program where we can point 
these folks who are not interested in being part of that automated system to leverage their skills and abilities that well that that way while we develop this team who will be our automation team so it's really important to understand what skills are necessary for the new future state and how to optimize them from a standpoint of incentive incentive is not necessarily uh, the, the money piece around it incentive is really reinforcing what the vision is of this new future state um, reinforcing with everyone at each level, wh whether it's the frontline medical technologist, middle or senior manager, why we continue to move forward in this new business model. It's important to also have the correct tools in place, training, mentorship, super trainers. It's really a, a great way to develop some of the people in your lab in, in order to continue dr to drive the incentive to this new change. And then, of course, uh, an action plan that has a level of, uh, I would say, flex to it, but toll gates and risk management. And absolutely within the, the action plan is the communication piece, because the more uh, the teams at all levels are aware during this transition, um, the more they, they, that the, the transition can stay to task and move to the standard work everyone is moving towards. Empowering change in your people. I can't say enough about change management. And I've seen a lot of great projects um, kick off very well with a great project plan and everyone on board with the project. But it's important, again, to assess where, where your people are, how they interact with the process, how they will interact with the new future state, and really systematically taking them through uh, a transition process working closely with the project management management team and change management team to implement a successful automation solution. Uh, it's very it's it's very key. Um, and one of the one of the subject matter experts that has been very successful in creating what I call methodical and um, not necessarily simple, but methodical execution to transition is John Cotter. So I would really recommend reading Leading Change. So with consultancy benefits, what do you hope to gain? At Impeco, our team is uh, very much focused on your personalized solution. We have a saying, if you've been in one lab, you've been in one lab, because every lab is different. The customers and patients you serve are different. There are different business needs. There are different sizes. So it really has to be relevant and pertinent to your health system or your laboratory. It's very important that we deliver to our customers a very clear understanding of their current state. And when we say a clear understanding of the current state, we assess that current state closely with our customers to identify what is known and potentially what is unknown in that current state so that when together we develop the future state workflow together, we can understand what potential gaps might be in order for solutions to fill those gaps. We also will deliver anticipated outcomes and returns on your investment because it's important when you're, when you're engaging this type of complex transition to see if it's really going to make a difference or do we need to do mid-course corrections in order to march to the key performance indicators and objectives of your company and organization. We want to make sure that through, throughout this process that we employ a smooth transition through change management. That means working closely with your project teams and our project teams to ensure that we're identifying pain points as well as holes, as well as sharing lessons learned uh, and best practices to advance our project moving forward in order to have sustainable results. Through that, we use a variety of tools because we know it's important not just to have a discussion over current and future state and anticipated outcomes, but we want you to have the most robust and quantitative data set in order to advance your decision to, a, to an optimal one. So on top of current and future state analysis, 
We will also provide process value stream mapping, which can quantify what the impact, impact may be from a standpoint of taking out wasted steps, improving turnaround times, improving FTE utilization. We want to optimize that workflow and we will work with you to continually re-engage uh, your thoughts as we develop future state mapping. Um, it's not uncommon and it's very, very well known in lean thinking that even though you identify a future state, you always have to be mindful of potential gaps that may not have been identified in the creation of that future state. So we do simulation modeling to help us understand where our, hypo our hypothesis and assumptions accurate. Do we need to do a mid-course correction in some of that future state planning? We will then give you a two, 3D and, and video modeling of your laboratory so you can get a sense beyond the very, I would say, limited view in 2D, what potentially this walking space could be. Out of that, you could, it also is a great marriage of the visual to the process mapping we do so you can really see the flow. And then of course, with project planning, we, we will propose, uh, you know, against your timelines, what the optimum implementation plan should be as well as providing to you quotation and financial models to make sure that your decision matrix is rob as, as robust as needed given the big investment of time, people, and money into this decision. So moving forward to outside of the laboratory, this is something very near to me, near and precious being a nurse. And I think some of the laboratorians will probably say, wow, uh, that's interesting. A nurse is uh, empathetic towards these errors, but you know, working in transplant, getting the the blood collection right the first time was absolutely key because of organs waiting. And I had a distinct opportunity of working with the laboratory to really improve our phlebotomy practices, and through that collaboration. Um, we were able to reduce our, our rejection rates from 43% down to less than 1%. Considering that the, the principal blood collectors were nurses, I had 150 nurses on this unit um, who were responsible, responsible for blood collection. And if you look at this uh, iceberg, it's, it's pretty impactful that 62% are pre-analytical issues. And for us, it was, um, uh, you know, uh, odd that we were others because we, my nurses really didn't know how to apply a label for some reason, but we corrected that. And sometimes they had inappropriate containers. So with that, one of the things at Impeco, as you see on the right side of this um, circle with the orange, I've just spoken to how do we improve traceability and standard work when the tube arrives, arrives to the lab. But Impeco also is very concerned with the left side of the circle, and that is how do we promote traceability and error proofing, error proofing from order to arrival into the lab, in, in particular when the principal blood collectors are not laboratorians. They might be trained phlebotomists, but in many institutions, it is an, a non-laboratorian, uh, an EMT, a medical assistant, a nurse, a nurse might be collecting that specimen. So within the global vision of the total testing process at Impeco, we really wanted to drive full process control from the point of order. And how does that work? This is a, a system called ProTube, and um, <clears throat> it's not just a labeling machine, excuse me, but it incorporates a strategy where it's marrying the right patient to the right tube, the right label at the right time. And the essence of this, this model is to really bring forward at the point of order, at the point of collection, at the point of draw, the importance of positive patient ID. 100% traceability on the go in non-laboratory settings. So um, it's, a, it's a, a very important piece at driving quality at its first step. 
So when we put it all together, when we put the whole circle together from order to release of results, we can't ignore uh, the very important piece called the, the software piece that really breaks down the silos. And um, at Impeco, we take the analytic software platform very seriously um, and, and joining the pre-lab arrival sample to the in-lab arrival of the sample through the middleware and through the LIS, really creating customizable reporting dashboards and graphs that can really help drive and leverage the robust data that comes from the lab to allow clinical operational financial performance. And not only from that piece, but really delivering that information to clinicians in order to come up with a treatment plan and deliver that plan and results to their patients. So we are now not only outside of the laboratory, but what is the emerging frontier? At Impeco, it doesn't just stop with the lab sample. We know that information is powerful. We know that in our healthcare world today, we need to have speed and access to information to all the clinicians that touch that patient as quickly as possible. And our vision is to have a personal healthcare record for patients where that data can be shared when and they want when and where they want to share it. We want that patient to be actively engaged with their clinical providers. So in the present world, I think today we all experience this. We have multiple um, providers in multiple locations. And our goal moving forward is that in this ecosystem, through an informatic solution, that the information is, is accessed and uh, I would say awarded to the clinician team from the patient so that wherever that patient is, in an ambulatory center, at his doctor's office, maybe in a hospital or in the clinical lab, every clinician has real-time visibility to what's going on with this patient and their current medical history. So the emerging, emerging frontier, we are actively working with Open EHR. It's a working with whole life and vendor neutral medical records because we still continue to keep the patient at its center. We will still have a focus of data traceability so that um, the data is protected and also comes from trusted sources. We want to make sure that the patient is the one in control of their information um, because that information is absolutely key for all that touch it. And we want to make sure that this pathway is available in whatever facility this patient happens to touch. So. It's my pleasure to have been able to spend some time with you today speaking about um, our vision inside, outside the lab and emerging future. Uh, that concludes my presentation. And Mary Beth, we can go to questions. Great, thank you very much, Maricel. Um, so at this time, uh, as Maricel said, we are going to move into our question and answer session with the audience. So again, for those of you in the audience who may have joined us late, you can send in your questions by typing them into the question box, which is located on the right-hand side of your screen. If you don't have a question, but if you have a comment from RSL or something like that, you can also put it in that Q&A box. And I'd also like to remind you that there are a number of handouts available for you in the handouts tab, which is also on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, so Marisol, we're gonna jump right into the first question here. Can you share with us how important the people factor is in an automation project? Yeah, that's a great question. The people factor in an automation project, it really boils down to some basics about process improvement, okay? And in process improvement circles or transition uh, projects, all who are part of the solution, I think we have a saying, um, let's all be part of the solution, must also be part of the process to arrive at the solution. Um, Many, well, many, many of our customers, I would say, have employed this type of strategy in order to help drive the decision for automation, um, as well as jointly, jointly work with us in the creation of the implementation strategy 
for uh, transition. But what some of our customers have done is really taken the insight from those who will be truly executing at the level of the automation and try to understand from them what's it take to really have an efficient and effective process. Taking that and having middle managers align that piece to the overall goals and objectives of the organization really rounds it out. It's really key that the front line becomes a bottom-up input and participation because they're the ones who are going to carry out the work. So, you know, this piece is absolutely important. And then as, as, um, as your lab transitions to the automated system, it's important to also continue to do lessons learned to, to really improve upon the process. And again, include that who, those who touch the process really are part of the learning and creation and uh, sustaining of uh, gains made as well as helping to understand what, fut what, a, what additional future state goals and objectives could be. All right, great. Thanks very much. Um, I also want to add to the audience, I've gotten a number of uh, private messages that ask how you can uh, access the recording of this download. Um, it will be available for you um, after the conclusion of the Automation Summit, so you can uh, keep an eye on your emails for more information uh, from Lab Manager about how to access that download, or you can go to the main uh, summit website where you first registered to attend this summit, and uh, that URL will be available to you at the end of our presentation here. Uh, so Maricel, our next question from the audience is, how can we better involve those outside of our laboratory, such as nurses collecting our samples? Yeah, and that's, that's, a, that's a great question. You know, I think one of the things I, I can tap from my own experience is um, laboratorians have, have a treasure trove of data that um, should be routinely shared with nursing. And in some of our projects, I've encouraged uh, as part of the core team to invite nursing leaders, mid-level mid leaders, and even some frontline, I would say, you know, growing leaders from the nursing staff to join in the forces of the true WIFM, what's in it for me, is that we are in this together to, to improve patient care. Um, one of the things that really helped us where I, I did that project with my nurses on rejected samples was joint data data tracking or trending on issues, um, rejected samples and why, um, turnaround times, how that affects turnaround times, um, you know, rejected samples by unit. Those are absolutely very helpful. Uh, whoever asked that question, I, I'd love to... Uh, speak with you in, in, in greater detail. It's a question that comes up quite a bit. How can we improve the relationship with non-laboratory clinicians? Because together, that's what really drives even a stronger laboratory process. All right, great, thank you. We have another question from the audience that says, how does Impeco work with so many third-party vendors of equipment successfully? You know, that's that's probably one of the most exciting things about Impeco. We are, our DNA is innovation. And we really come together understanding when a, when a vendor comes to us and say they'd like to connect their system to our line. We do, we have some initial meetings where we try to understand the rationale for that connectivity, um, what the impact might be for the laboratory. Uh, with our combined subject matter experts, we always try to understand how does this help break down the silos. And then we work together on developing, um, I would say, customized uh, design and development activities because they're a little bit different with each vendor. But we do, uh, within that design process, do follow regulatory uh, standards for development. And we work together until we come to what I would say a commercial launch plan together. So it's not uncommon that we even do uh, launch and go to market strategies together. Great, thank you. Uh, we have some more questions from the audience here. How does Impeco authenticate specific hardware, such as liquid handlers, PCR machines, et cetera, 
for compliance with the required data traceability and instrument accuracy precision? Is this done in-house or by the partner vendor? You know, uh, we typically do those together and those are very uh, specific to each vendor. And again, I think this is one of those uh, pieces. Yes, absolutely, because we're, we're FDA and ISO required. We, we step that through very methodically together because um, since it's on our track, uh, we, wanna, we do want to validate and verify performance. You know, we want to go through all those steps together. But we can certainly take that piece offline, too, if there's interest from that perspective. Great. Thank you. Uh, we have another question that says, besides data real-time visibility, do you see other trends coming up in the next one to five years? Oh, yes. Um, you know, I think from a standpoint of data real-time visibility, I think we're already seeing that with like the wearables. And, you know, I think we see the EKG monitoring, you know, that goes straight to the physician's office. But I think some of the key pieces that that have um, customers have reached to us about or, or vendor partners is around uh, mass spec connectivity, anatomical path, um, liquid handling robot type connectivity. I think more and more laboratories are saying, you know, we we need to have this information as close to the clinicians who are reporting it. Um, we're seeing a, a lot more interest in putting these in, I would say, um, you know, moving away from what I, what I call the multi-location laboratory in order to speed efficiencies in testing. Because a lot of these patients, if you can imagine, uh, you know, with COVID, uh, the, the ramp up was very difficult during 2020 and, uh, you know, heard on the news uh, how how the mass spec part was really historically run by researchers and now we're making it mainstream. But in addition to getting mass spec live, PCR live, um, the other attendant tests also were expanding because COVID was, is, is one of those viruses that significantly impact all of the systems in the body. So, you know, we have customers are interested in automating as much as they can because COVID testing also means you're going to need um, blood gas testing, um, blood bank uh, screening and co confirmation. You're going to need renal testing, liver testing, coag testing, because the, the um, disease state was so extreme uh, for, for many patients. So testing, not just for COVID, but other testing really ramped up very quickly. Great, thank you. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions here. As open system, how do you run simulations when other vendor systems are connected to the track? Are you able to supply data outputs on third party systems? Uh, from a standpoint of the um, how we run simulations, those are part of the discussions we have when we do connectivity discussions. So we really have to understand uh, throughput requirements. And again, that's a uh, the, the thing that is wonderful about Impeco is uh, we just don't create hardware and software. It's really building a relationship with different partners and vendors out there to maximize and create a win-win uh, for what the, the partner vendor is trying to do to connect to Impeco and vice versa. Because ultimately, the goal as our partners is how can we significantly impact patient care. So for simulations, we do have um, very open discussions about how, how we incorporate performance criteria to best create the outputs. Um, okay. All right, great. Thank you. Um, as a, as any technical as any technical equipment, the automation system will suffer downtime. How would a customer incorporate this into any kind of planning? You know, that, that's, that's a fantastic question because that, that, that is a pressing, that's probably the number one question for any laboratory, any vendor. We are able to simulate uh, downtime and we typically create with the laboratory uh, redundancies within the system. And that's very important because 
you never know if you're going to have a, a power outage or just some other type of issue uh, to, to impact that. So redundancy is key. And uh, when we're working with laboratories, we're, not, we're looking not only on redundancy within automation, but redundancy within the analyzers. And we look at our simulations to understand capacity because we don't create redundancy from a standpoint if uh, the whole sky would fall in, if you will, but really trying to understand realistically, can, can the system support each other given, given any type of downtime or even a, a PM, a preventive maintenance that has to be done or, or, for, or for some other you know, issue that would force uh, production down. Great, thanks. Uh, we have time for one final question here. Are there difficulties in dealing with lab information system vendors as you work with them to integrate your automation into their uh, LIS? Do delays in installations occur because of this? Um, you know, we're always you're always trying to as you do installation. Uh, we don't, I don't, we don't see these types of like significant delays because within our project management team, we're really working very closely every step of the way in lockstep with all of the key core members of that installation project team, which represent the customer, our partner vendors, with, with all of the partner vendors who will be connecting to that line and also with the LIS vendors. So, um, you know, there's always an element of saying, where are we in the plan? What's the potential gap? What's the potential delay? And looking very proactively that way as a team. Okay, wonderful. Thanks very much. So this brings us to the end of today's webinar, and I would just like to remind all of you that this webinar will be available for free on-demand download shortly following this live presentation. So again, please watch your emails for a message from Land Manager about this, or you can go to the Land Manager Automation Summit URL, which is at the bottom of your screen right now. So on behalf of Land Manager, I'd like to thank Maricel Roberts of Impeco for all the hard work she put into her presentation, and I'd like to thank all of you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. Once again, thank you to our sponsors, including Impeco, whose support allows Lab Manager to keep these webinars free of charge for our readers. Finally, I would like to invite all of you to attend the other webinars offered by Lab Manager's Automation Digital Summit. Our next presentation is called Cloud Labs and HTE, a paradigm shift for the lab of the future. This will take place in just a little while at 2 p.m. Eastern. We invite you to please join us. For more information on all of our upcoming or on-demand webinars, or to learn more about the latest tools and technologies for the laboratory, please visit our website at labmanager.com. We hope you can join us again. Thank you again to Maricel, and thank you to all of you for being part of our Automation Digital Summit. We hope you have a great day.